We're going to start, be starting a youth musical ensemble on the second, third, and fourth Sundays of the month after church. Um, we're going to be singing, playing bells, tone chimes, maybe some musical games. Um, any kids are welcome to join us. If, if you have anybody um, outside of the church or grandkids or nieces or nephews or friends of your children that you would like to invite, please do that. And we're looking for a name for that group. So if you have a good name that you think might fit a children's musical church ensemble, let me know, because I'm a little bit at a loss, and I'm trying to figure it out. So, thank you, all right, thank you. Yes, the music program is going to move forward again. Uh, script orders are due today. Yes. Um, next Sunday. Sorry, next Sunday. Next Sunday. Okay, okay. that's right. And you want to talk about that? Thank you. 
budget every year with uh, an amount that we're going to get. So um, please, if, if you can, buy the gift cards. I think we started in 2009, and I think we're probably closing out on like $40,000. And we've just been paying for things we normally buy a different way. So, yeah. So any first-time guests with us today, raise your hand. So, uh, upcoming events, uh, September 19th is our outside worship and congregational picnic. Um, turkey, barbecue, and hot dogs will be provided by the church. Um, there are sign-up sheets in the back for cakes with a cake walk, um, prizes for other games that we're going to be playing, and all kinds of things that are going to go on. Last, uh, we didn't have one last year because of COVID, but uh, the year before, the picnic was an unbelievable event, and it was very good. So please, plan on attending. Uh, would you be willing to sponsor guest musicians during our special services? We are taking donations for people to come in and like we did uh, with the violins we had on one Sunday this summer. Um, and uh, other guest uh, people to come in and play. And she's coming back for the, for the Thanksgiving Eve service she's going to play. And she's going to play at one of the uh, Christmas Eve services too. So if you'd like to donate to that, please give a check and an envelope and uh, for the guest musicians. Pastor James is, is always taking new uh, people into the confirmation class. And uh, I think you have two new ones this year. Yep. So that's great. If you know anybody that would like to sign up, please get in contact with Pastor James. Just so that you're aware, the process for being confirmed has changed quite drastically from the way it used to be. We have sessions, and congregants have to complete the session, each one of them, before they can get confirmed. If they want to make it a five-year process, that's up to them. They don't have to do it all in one year. But there's always, at least twice a year, uh, those 12 sessions will be repeated, and they just have to attend. Faith formation is expected for anybody. But uh, this is mandatory. So if they want to start in June, they can. If they want to start in December, they can. If they want to start next week, they can. So I, I find the new curriculum that the pastor has uh, uh, developed is really nice um, because when you go to the session, you get a check mark. And once those check marks are all completed, you will be confirmed. I have another announcement. Go ahead. Uh, this is just in. Uh, the Slatedale Cemetery Walk is sponsored by the Slatedale History Preservation Committee. It's going to be on September the 25th, Saturday from 2 to 3.30. Or the rain date is going to be the next day, Sunday, September the 26th. It's going to, there's going to be a presentation by our own Richard Smith about the history of the Slatedale Cemetery. And then there'll be histories of the following families that are buried in the cemetery. The Germans, the Kerns, the Shentons, and the Salmons. So if anybody's interested in supporting the Historical Association Preservation Committee, I'm sure they appreciate that. They are too. Thank you, Pastor James. Um, we would like to keep in prayers our youth for continuing their education at college or trade school. Please let the pastor know your student's name, college, university, they are attending and major, and also anyone that would be going into the military, please submit their names as well. Um, faith, uh, pork and sauerkraut dinner will be held on Saturday, October 30th for pickup only, two to five. The cost is ten dollars. The dinner includes pork, sauerkraut, mashed potatoes, applesauce, and a dessert. And we always look forward to the wonderful desserts that the ladies of the church make. Uh, call the office to place your order. Um, they are also having a walk-in basket social Friday, October 22nd from 3 to 7, and Saturday, uh, the 23rd of October from 12 to 4. And it is a walk-in basket social. Any questions on that, please see Bonnie or Karen, and they can help you out. There's sheets in the back and flyers that you can take if you'd like to hang it up at your favorite store. Um, 
There's sliders back there, please. All we can get is, is everything we need. Um, altar flyers are presented today to the glory of God in celebration of Kevin Minnick's 60th birthday on September 8th. I don't know if Kevin made it to know. And anniversaries. Um, Tom and Deb Craig, uh, September 6th, and, and they're not here today. Um, September 6th also, Tammy and Jesse White. I don't see Tammy here as well. Uh, and Joe and Sharon Conway on September 9th. Happy anniversary. Our mission for September is the Allentown Rescue Mission. The roof offering, we are still taking money to complete the offering for the roof. Um, the total cost is $54,000. I think we've raised $16,000 to date. So uh, we still need some money there. Um, birthdays, Kevin Minnick, September 8th. Patrick Conway, September 10th. Happy birthday, Patrick. You were born the day after your parents got married? Anyone else here that has a birthday or an anniversary that I missed? We wish everyone happy anniversary and happy birthday. Any other announcements for the good of the church? If not, let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God.
share in singing our first hymn, number 59 of your hymns. <laughs> Did not accept him. 
But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm looking for my glasses and see what they do. I have them on. Uh, as we enter into this time of receiving God's Word, let us bow our heads and pray. Holy and gracious one, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word again. Help us to hear it in new and wonderful ways that we might apply it to our journey, so that we might truly be a reflection of your love and mercy to all we need. For this we pray in Jesus' precious name, and let the people of God say, Amen. Now, I didn't get to see the service last week. Did you post it, Beth? No, I did not. How am I supposed to check on you guys if I can't watch you when I'm not here? Uh, I did hear Randy's message. And so, and I thought he did a great job. That scares me. Because now I've got to start doing great jobs again. Uh, but his message about the putting on the breastplate and the shield, and that was wonderful because it makes it more memorable. Today's message isn't going to be as wonderful, but it is as important, and I hope and pray that you remember. We hear these words from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. That tells us that this message is a nativity story. It's talking about the birth of creation, of the world. It's also talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. Even though it's in hidden language, this is about Jesus coming into our world. We don't hear about cradles or mangers or inns. We don't hear about shepherds abiding in their fields or about wise men traveling from the east. Instead, we hear this concept about the Word. Now, some of you probably already know that I am very particular about certain things. And when I share in the bulletin uh, things about the Word or the Way, there's a capital W, and in the smaller uh, font size, there is a capital A and Y for Way or capital O-R-D for word, when you see it all capitalized, that should make you think, why did the pastor do that? There must be a reason. And the reason is because those words are directly referring to Jesus the Christ. So I don't want them to lose that potency, that importance. So I have it all capitalized. Because we are told that Jesus is the way. And we're told that uh, Jesus is the Word made flesh. And so I want to continue to make sure that people think of those things when they see those words and they just don't rush over them. Almost like the hymn that we sang this morning. This is my Father's world. And as it goes through, uh, there were some changes in the lyrics. Now, I'm not a big proponent for changing lyrics in hymns, especially the old, true hymns. It would be like putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa to try to improve it. You just can't. But when I was singing the words to this song and heard them take out some of the male imagery and put in God, and they took out the male pronouns, he and him, and put God, it reminded me, this is about some person that made creation, but it was God in God's wisdom. So having said that, 
If we would go back to the original Greek, the word for word is logos. And so when the people that heard this message from a long time ago are going to hear something different. For the Jewish people that were in the crowd, in the beginning, automatically takes us to the beginning of the Torah and the creation of heaven and earth. And God simply spoke the words, and it happened. And when it happened, and God took a step back and looked, God declared it good. For the Greeks that were in the audience listening to this gospel writer, they heard logos as the word for we use as logic. The logic of the world. Why things happen in the way they happen, there must be some sort of logic to them. And so for the great philosophers and thinkers of the Greek society, they were able to connect with it as well. Both the word made flesh and the logic that the Greeks were thinking of are about taking things that were in chaos and drawing that into some sort of order and understanding. I was reading in the upper room this morning's devotional was about uh, choosing a word that would be your word for the year. And that would be your focus and your attempt to fulfill. And in this uh, small group of uh, people, they were talking, uh, a lot of them chose the word love, uh, kindness. But this particular writer this morning was struggling because she could only think of, uh, she was thinking of o obedience. But she said, it's not really obedience. And then she came up with two words. Well done. We are called to be people of God. And God has called us into this place at this time for a particular reason. So, I'm having a moment with my COVID. Um, so if I say, what was I saying? So you have to pay attention to the sermon today. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, thank you, Penny. The word for the year. And she chose, well done. Because, and I would have chosen the word faithfulness. It's because you are trying to do what was asked of you through the Holy Spirit. And that in itself can give you a whole different look at life. If you're living your life to, that it be well done, that you would hear those words, then that means that you're really applying what Jesus teaches to us. That's why we talk about the Word made flesh is Jesus Christ. And we are able to see God's Word in Him. Sometimes we take the interpretations that we have from the Old Testament and we try to pick and choose what parts we like or don't like about God. But in Jesus Christ, Jesus personifies that gift that God has given us. Jesus shows us how to love even the people who are most unlovable. When he looked out from the cross and prayed to God, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was praying for his enemies, those who were going to crucify him. Or when he sat with the woman at the well, or amongst the lepers, or having dinner with the tax collectors. He shows us that all are welcome even one such as me. When I think about that message that Jesus teaches us through parable and through miracle and through story, it gives me a hope that we might continue to be a world filled with love and hope and peace. So, <clears throat> having said that, I came back this morning and sat in uh, and we were talking and 
some of the young people from confirmation shared with me uh, about some stuff that's going on. And I'm thinking, no, this can't be. Things about homophobia and racism in our schools, and that is getting worse, not better. And I think, really? We're in the 21st century. We should be about what it means to be about following Christ. And the one person said that in response to some hatred was that this doesn't show that you're treating your neighbor as yourself. When we have young people who get it, that means that the word has taken root in their hearts and in their lives, and that they are on the pathway that God intends to love, to forgive, to accept, and to walk with all of God's children. John the Baptist was mentioned in the scripture today. He comes along and he is to point people to the way. He's the one who's standing in the river calling people to repent and to be baptized to change their ways, to follow God's rules, not man-made rules. But it goes to say that he wasn't the light. He was just to point people to the light. That means that you and I are called to be people like John the Baptist. It's not about what we do, but it's about what God does through us. You might not think that your contributions are all that great, but even a phone call, or a hug, or a reminder that people are missed is enough to make a difference in that person's life. And it's not about you, it's about them. When I think of that, I start to think about some of the stuff that we share in the United Church of Christ. I know that we get labeled as sometimes ultra-liberal, sometimes we get charged with being too conservative, but what I like about the United Church of Christ is summed up in this phrase, we agree to disagree. But that doesn't mean we can't still come together with our differences and worship God. I share that because the other thing that I think comes out of this Gospel of John is that God's not finished with us yet. We still have a lot to learn and we have a lot to uh, try to improve so that we might truly be the children of God. I've said this before, many of you may have heard it elsewhere, but there's a, a motto that uh, we use uh, called or it goes, uh, don't put a period where God has placed a comma. And that was a letter written by Gracie Allen to her husband, George Burns, when she had been diagnosed with cancer. And she knew her time was coming to an end. And she was the foundation of the rock that George had his life placed on. And so she wrote this letter to encourage George after her passing. And this phrase that we use was the phrase that she used to define death. It's not the end. It's a pause. It's a stop along the way for something yet to come. So if we continue to follow God's promises, we know that this isn't all there is. There's more to come. God is still speaking. And it's still the message of inclusion and hope and love. And it's to help us to better ourselves so that we're not so critical of others or ourselves for that matter. And that we might know that there is new life. Each and every moment we wake up, each and every breath we take throughout the day, each and every uh, choice that we have to make, gives us the opportunity to not only receive the love of God, but to share the love of God. 
And I pray that we here at Good Shepherd might be faithful in our commitment to love even some of the most unlovable people. And to welcome some of the most unwelcome characters. And to remember that we once were strangers, and now we are part of God's family. Amen? We have the faith formation kids who are still here come up and still stay with us tonight. Faith formation kids should be coming forward. good to be reminded of those songs we learned ourselves when we were their age, because we carried those songs with us, and I pray that the young people will carry these songs with them as well. Thank you, Beth, for teaching us for our children. As we enter into this time of prayer, uh, I would ask that you would keep in prayer those who are listed on the inside back of your bulletin. Uh, they are people who are celebrating, there are people who are suffering, there are people who are struggling, there are people who uh, need prayer. We might not know all their needs, but we do know that God knows their needs, that God will hear God's, uh, will hear our prayers for these uh, people. Um, before I start on that, I want to give a shout out. Philip, are you listening? This is for you. Uh, Philip White uh, had called, uh, and we talked a little bit, and he says, but nobody calls me. So if you think about it, and you have the time, and I stress that you have the time, uh, call Philip and say hello. Is that okay, Philip? Uh, Philip would hear, love to hear from you. Uh, Philip and his mother, Sandy, are very cautious about the coronavirus, they don't allow anybody to their home, even family, they drop groceries off and put it on the stoop uh, because of the underlying conditions that both Philip and his mother have. And so this will be one way for us to connect. And there might be other people that we are missing from among our pews, uh, not knowing full well why, but if you think about picking up the phone and calling them, that might be an answer to some of their prayers. I want to lift up uh, a 
prayer for Tom Craig. Tom is Deb Craig's uh, husband. Many of you are familiar with Deb and all of the work that she does. Well, they're struggling. They're, uh, Tom was diagnosed with cancer, and he uh, is in the hospital. I think your mother said they're hoping to get home maybe tomorrow, or today, right? Uh, but the, uh, I know that the two of them, as a whole family, uh, really would appreciate your prayers and support during this uh, experience as it unfolds. They will need our help and our, our support. So please pray for Tom and for Deb and for the family as they go through this. Uh, I also want to take time, there's a lot of things that have happened. Uh, over the last two weeks while I was on vacation. And I would just like to take a moment to stop and first of all remember the women and men who have been in harm's way, especially in light of Afghanistan and the insurgents. I would ask that you keep in prayer those people who were uh, affected by the tornadoes and the hurricane that came through and the damage that it caused as well as the lives that they have taken. These people we may never know, but I ask that you just imagine that your brother or your sister that's going through that, or your mother or father, or your son or daughter. It makes a difference. So let's take a moment of silence that you might offer a prayer for these and others in your life. Holy and gracious God, as we gather to be your people, we want to say thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you have given us life. We thank you for all that supports our lives, clean water and air, shelter, clothing, food, and substance. We pray that you might continue to bless us on our journey by reminding us that we were created in love and for love and to be loved. So, gracious one, as you call us to love ourselves as neighbor. We ask that you help us to remind those around us to do the same. Through the lessons we learned in Sunday school, in choir, those things that we learn in confirmation class or in church, that we might begin to apply them so that we might be living the gospel as you call us to in Jesus Christ. We are called to not only learn about your love and uh, your miracles, but we're also called to act upon these lessons. That we become more than just hearers of the word, but we might become doers. We ask that you might be with the women and the men who serve our country, whether here at home or as far as Japan, that you might continue to make a presence that they know our support for them. We pray for the victims of violence and war and destruction. We pray for the people who are affected by uh, natural disasters. And pray that you might continue to help us to reach out to them as people have reached out to us during our difficult times. We pray for those who are sick those who are dealing with uh, limitations due to advancing age, dealing with anxieties and depression, dealing with other mental uh, concerns. We pray for those who uh, are struggling to make ends meet and the unemployed, people who are struggling with self-worth and what it means to be a follower of Christ. We pray for the orphan and the widow, and we pray for the uh, guidance, that you might continue to send people into our lives through social work, through medicine, that we might see your love and compassion in this work as we pray for those who are in the hospital. We pray that you might continue to bless people with research to try to discover cures for cancer and other diseases. And that we pray that you might continue to let your healing and fullness 
be a part of each and every one of these lives. Holy One, we pray that you might continue to make us worthy of being called Christians, that we might continue to offer words of support and not of criticism, that we might offer uh, structure and not chaos, that we might continue to let your light so shine that others might see you in our actions and in our words and in our very being. We pray, O oh, gracious one, that you hear our prayers that we might continue to be a faithful church in all that you ask of us through the work that we do and the ministry that we offer and the missions that we support, that we might continue to know your love in these acts of greatness. Fill this place with your spirit. Touch the hearts and the lives of those who gather here. Continue to support them as they walk faithfully in this journey. And remind us that there is no end. There's simply a pause along the journey. And so we enter into that kingdom that knows no end, where peace and joy and love and hope thrive. We pray, O oh, gracious one, that you hear our prayers then on behalf of all those who were mentioned from this altar and from the altar of our hearts. For this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now if you join me in the words that our Lord and Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I do want to also mention one other uh, person that is on the prayer list. I know you'll see her name, but uh, this was new to me. Uh, I know it's Smith. Shirley. Shirley Smith. Uh, we prayed for a lot of her family, uh, her sisters and her brothers, but I call on you to pray for her. Uh, it seems that she was doing something and she fell and she broke, somebody said she broke her hip, but the way she explained it, she broke her pelvic bone across. So she is in rehab and I would ask you to do up and.
others through our time, talents, and treasures. We are ever grateful for your gifts that you call us to care for, which we do for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God who made you, loves you, and lives with you bring you to a faith that cannot be weighted down and a courage that knows no bounds. And as you go forth to do that, I pray that you might take this blessing with you. That the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that the love of God our Heavenly Father, and that the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you, not only this day, but throughout eternity. Amen. Thank you.